Welcome to I Lecture Online. Here's another thermodynamics problem, but more than a thermodynamics problem, it's more do you know your units and do you know how to convert from one unit to another? And by the way, do you know the units associated with the Boltzmann constant? Because if you don't, you're going to have a problem trying to solve this problem. So let's take a look at it. It says the work done by a gas molecule in an isolated system is given by the following equation that the work is equal to alpha beta squared e to the minus x squared over alpha kt where, and I'm missing an e here, there we go, where x is the displacement, k is the Boltzmann constant, and t is the temperature. Alpha and beta are constants, then the dimensions of beta will be. So we're trying to find the dimensions of beta. So, what's their strategy here? What's the principle? Well, the principle is this, that the exponent here needs to be unitless. So whatever the units are, this becomes unitless, and here we need to find the units. Well, the units for alpha can be found by setting the units of that equal to zero, and the beta then can be found by saying we did work, and of course we should know the units for work. So let's repeat the equation. We have alpha, beta squared e to the minus x squared over alpha kt. All right, we're now going to try to determine the units of everything in here, including alpha. And so, rather than using m for mass, l for length, and t for temperature, I like to use the actual unit that makes it easier to comprehend. So let's take this exponent here, and let's see what we have. So we have the units of x, which is distance, displacement, so that would be meters, and since it's squared, we get meters squared in the numerator divided by the units for alpha. Now, we don't know yet what those are. The units for the Boltzmann constant, well, let's see here. Boltzmann constant would be joules per Kelvin, so joules per Kelvin, and the unit for temperature is Kelvin. So right away, you can see that Kelvin and Kelvin cancel out, and this has to equal essentially zero. Well, not really zero. I think what you want is you want one there, right? You want this to be unitless. So we have, because when we have m to the zero, of course, you get one. So zero is not correctly. We should just call it one. All right, now we need to convert joules. So this is equal to meters squared, the units for alpha, and joules is a newton meter. Okay, so meters cancel out, and uh, now we have newtons, meters, and the units for alpha. But I think I'm going to stop simplifying that. We could say, well, newtons is kilogram meters per second square, but in the end, we're going to equate this to work done, and the units for work is um, newton meters, it's joules. So newton meters, oh, I feel like sneezing, wow. Almost. I think I controlled it. Anyway, <laughs> so the unit for work is newton meters, so I think I'll leave it like this. And to make this equal to 1, we need uh, meters in the denominator, I mean me, me, uh, meters in the numerator and newtons in the denominator, because then when I multiply all this out, I get 1. Which means that units for alpha, the units for alpha, can be written as meters divided by newton. Okay, now, to find the units for beta, I can then say that work is equal to alpha times beta squared times e to that exponent, right, e to that exponent. But now, unit-wise, on the left side, we have work done, which is newton meters, is equal to alpha, and alpha is meters per newton, And beta squared, well, now it, what we're trying to find is what beta squared is equal to. And of course, once we find beta squared, we have to take the square root to find beta. All right, so I'm going to cross multiply here. Notice we get Newton squared and meters comes over here. So now we have um, Newton squared is equal to, and notice that the mass cancels, or meters cancels out on both sides. So that means that the unknown quantity here is Newton squared, which means, since this is equal to the units for beta squared, so then I take the square root, I can then say that Newtons, the units for Newtons, is equal to the units for beta. And let me 
Write that again. There we go. Okay, so now we know that the units associated to beta is newtons, and newtons is equal to, or the units of newtons is equal to kilograms, meters per second squared. So that is, if we now convert that to mass, length, and time squared, like this, or if you write it all together, you can go mass, length, time to the minus two. Whoop, that should be a two. There we go. All right. And now, do we have the proper answer there? And it looks like this matches up with C. So C is the answer. Mass, length, time to the negative two. And so in a convoluted way, we finally figured out the units associated with beta. Again, the way we do this here, strategy, this should be unitless. E to some exponent should just give us a number. So that means that meter squared, joules per Kelvin and Kelvin, together with the units for alpha, and set that equal to one, we can find the units for alpha, which ended up being meter, uh, meters per Newton. And then we know that the work is equal to alpha times beta. Remember that this is unitless. So we know the units for alpha, we know the units for work, and then we need the unknown units for beta. Newton square is the units for beta square. Newton is the units for beta. Newton is kilogram meters per second square, mass length over time square. And that was the, pre that's the way in which we did it. Takes a little time. I think this one will probably take you close to three minutes to figure out. First, you have to kind of orient yourself, come up with a strategy, realize that this is unitless, go to the process to find the units for alpha, then go to the process again to find the units for beta. Yeah, unless you're really fast, this will probably take you at least three minutes. So hopefully you can save some time in the next problem. But that is how it's done. If you're going to use unitless, uh -huh. that, that whole E, right. which makes you how unitless, why bother finding alpha? Because if you don't find alpha, you have oh, two unknowns. Well, there's two alpha. Yeah, so alpha yeah. Then, oh yeah, if there is two alphas. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say if you, there's no alpha there, you don't even need to. Uh, yeah, you're right. At first I thought, well, why do I bother with this? I can just go here. But then you realize you have two unknowns. So you have to do this one first to get alpha. So you can eliminate the units for that to find the unit for beta. So, yeah, it's a two-step process. No shortcuts. <laughs> no shortcuts.